Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Joe, where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today, we are reviewing the Gaggia Magenta Plus. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the last one in my three-part series for Black Friday shoppers looking for a super automatic espresso machine, which I know is a pretty popular item uh, to give to a loved one uh, or a wife or whatever. So uh, I'm doing this, and I think this is the last one we're going to do, and it's going to be a little bit of a doozy because I don't particularly like this machine, and it's going to probably show. But... <laughs> Let's start off with how this is all going to go down, and then I'll tell you how it's all going to work out at the end. We'll give a final score, do a taste test, and, you know, I'll remind you to subscribe and like the video. Anyways, first up is uh, the pros, and second, we're going to do the cons, and then the final score and taste test. So, uh, let's start off with pros. Um, there is a couple, so I'm going to go over them. First off, my favorite thing about this machine is the steam wand. Now, maybe some people won't agree with me because it is a super automatic machine, which they think that the manufacturers, I should say, think that you don't know what you're doing. So they normally put a Panarello on here or like a auto frothing system, which is kind of nice occasionally. But having a traditional steam wand you can get much better froth if you're looking for a very silky froth for latte art this is the way to go it's going to be a little hard on this because it is so close to the machine but it's a traditional steam wand that can can get you there if you're willing to learn and then the other thing i really like about it is how fast it steamed we were able to steam milk in about 35 to 39 seconds getting milk up to 130 degrees so yeah it's pretty quick uh, i will say the startup um, on that is a little bit slow it takes a little while for it to start steaming but the steam is very hot and it pushes out very quickly so that's my first pro and my favorite thing about the machine uh, next up, it is nice that it does have a little adjuster here. It is a little shallow, but hey, I'm going to give you the points. At least it lets you adjust it, um, and I think that is nice there. Uh, third, I like that there is a screen on here. I have some negative things that I'll talk about in the, in the con section, but overall, it is nice to have a screen. It's always a little bit better, especially with adjusting settings and things like that. Uh, I've found that Machines that don't have the settings uh, in a screen, it gets a little bit confusing to change things. So I do give it that. Uh, next up, uh, Pro, is that there is a dosing um, on here. You can do bypass dosing. So if you do decap or something like that, it is nice to have. Uh, and then I'm not actually going to give the grinder a Pro, but sort of a Pro mention is that it does have an adjuster uh, on there, but I'll tell you why. It's just a sort of a mention and not a real pro later. Um, and it does have a pretty decent water tank. Um, it's pretty decently large, and you can access uh, pouring it from pretty much every angle because it's pretty long, so that's nice. Um, but as I mentioned with another machine, when I was starting this machine up, I did have an issue, so I want to let you know that the water tank, uh, with a lot of super automatics, they give you a little bit of an issue when you first start them up. You have to kind of get it to seat right and get all the air pockets out. So this machine uh, also had that same error. I kept putting it in. It kept saying there's a factory defect or something, which is not the case. It's just a matter of turning it on, turning it off a few times, filling the water tank, making sure you're seating it a couple of times. Eventually, it'll fix itself, but don't freak out if you're having that issue and you bought this machine. Stay calm. Just unplug it. Pop this thing in a couple of times. Plug it back in. Might take you four or five times, maybe six. It took me it took me a few on my live stream, and it still didn't fix itself on the live stream, but I eventually got it working, so keep that in mind. Another pro here, I will say there is a little indicator here, so when you pour water or when you know when your drip tray gets full, you do get an indication that it is full, so that's nice to know, so you don't get you know liquid everywhere. I think that's about 
it for the pros. I, th you know, I think I can say that it's nice that it does have a separate water. You can get water out of here uh, instead of having water in here, which is nice. Again, this is sort of a pro mention, but uh, I think it is nice that you can get water for here for, or for um, you know, making tea or something like that instead of getting water just from here. Um, that kind of ends up giving you, you know, tea that kind of tastes like old coffee. All right, so let's move into the cons. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the least conny con, uh, the screen. <laughs> so the screen, it's nice that it's here, but I feel like I'm working with an ATM machine from 1998. Uh, it's like you have to click, or maybe, better yet, a gas station uh, thing where you're reading the gas station with a credit card, because you have to like use the buttons, and it kind of gets confusing to see I don't want to start stop I just want to I just want to use this I wish it was a touch screen it's not you have to use these awkward buttons that are around here so uh, that's my biggest issue with it but again overall I think it's better that it has a screen than it doesn't have a screen um, so uh, next up uh, I will say that the grinder like I had mentioned earlier, it's a pro that you can adjust it. Uh, it's a negative that I have to find a dosing tool that is very small and um, not something that I would think to even save personally um, to make the adjustments. You have to take the dosing cup, flip it upside down, pop it in here, and turn it to make the adjustment. Not to mention that the adjustments did almost nothing for me. I made it, <laughs> I changed it from the coarsest setting to the finest setting, and I didn't even notice any difference. <laughs> uh, it seemed like the, the coffee was still coming out pretty similar, uh, a pretty similar speed, and also it uh, didn't produce any difference in the crema. So, um, you know, the grinder, I, I don't know what's going on with this. Maybe it's got a bad, you know, grinder that wasn't properly um, set up or something from the factory. But this is, you know, I'm not going to buy multiple machines to test out multiple versions of them. So uh, I'm going off of what I see here, and it's not the best grinder. Uh, and that is a huge issue since the biggest thing with making coffee is grinding it and then brewing it. Grinding it is a huge deal, though. So that's a, a huge negative in my opinion. A couple more cons here. Uh, so first off, you can't take the drip tray out without hitting these buttons here, which is maybe good, but you have to kind of click them and really give it a good tug here. So you got to go like that. And then, hey, look at this. This is in the way. So you got to pull this out of the way just to get this out. And the funniest thing about this is there's nothing even there. They could have just made this smaller on this side and put a put a, a crease or something, uh, a cut there. I'm not sure what the thought process was and why they did that, um, but you know it is what it is. So you have to move this over every time. I think that was just poor design. Um, and then the drip tray itself. Um, this thing is nice. It is a nice piece of metal, um, but the downside is. I mean, it has nice rubber on here, too, but if you have liquid going across the cup, like maybe you didn't line it up, the water's probably just going to sit on top of this. So I think better grates could have been um, introduced there. Uh, also, there is no cup warmer. There's no place to push your cups. You'd think on a $600 machine, this would give you some area to warm your cup, but it doesn't. Uh, so I think that's kind of a con. It's not the biggest deal, like I've said before. I don't think that's the biggest deal because these machines generally don't heat up that well. But, you know, a little place just to put your cup would be nice. Um, other thing I don't like about this is uh, just the general design on it. It it's doesn't give me the feeling of, like, a really high-quality product. Again, I think once you cross that five to $600 price, uh, I think you should start trying to use more metal um, and maybe, like, I don't know, maybe not looking super, like, some of the cuts in the plastic, I don't know, everything just feels a little thin to me on this machine, so 
I think the overall design could have been a little bit better, a little bit more thought out. Another con that I wanted to mention is it also doesn't save your settings. So if you put on the espresso and maybe you change this up a, a bump to 2.2, and once you turn the machine off and turn it back on, your settings go away. Don't know why. It's kind of dumb that you have to change it every time. Uh, some, some things seem to save, like I think the amount of coffee here saved, but for some reason the ounce didn't want to save for me. So I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it's, maybe it's when it gets unplugged it changes that. I'm not sure, but I just thought that was something to mention. Um, other than that, I think we are ready to do our coffee taste test. So now I'm going to show you why I had so many issues and why I'm, I guess I'm mostly upset about this. Uh, I'm going to make the shot of espresso and you tell me if you think it's fast or not. I'm going to set this to two ounces. Check. Again, I don't know why it didn't just save it just a second ago. Okay, about 11 seconds from first drip. And then let me just show you that crema. It's very light in color. Notice that the crema is pretty light. Um, I'll take a sip. It's not... It's not that it's the worst tasting thing in the world, but it is pretty watery for a shot of espresso. Honestly, this little bit of coffee in here, and maybe my palate's just crazy because I drink espresso mostly, but this tastes like a strong cup of coffee, not a shot of espresso. So, I don't know. Um, if you are buying this, to get that experience. Um, I just don't think it's that. It tastes a little over extracted, not the greatest, um, not the not the worst, not the greatest, but it's just for espresso, I just can't get over that Gaggia, who makes an amazing traditional espresso machine, I put this together. I just, uh, it, it hurts my heart a little bit because I love their normal espresso machines. They make great semi-automatic and uh, professional um, you know, grade espresso machine. So I really w had high hopes for this, but I unfortunately am giving this a pretty low score. So because of all the issues I've had, the startup issue, the just the quality of coffee, um, I'm going to go ahead and give this a 5.4. It stings. It stings, folks. But uh, 5.4 is what I'm going for. I would say, especially right now during Black Friday, if you we're looking to spend around five to seven hundred dollars, something like that. Go with the DeLonghi. And if you wanted to just save money, maybe you're doing this not during Black Friday. Um, I would go with the uh, Cafe Affetto for the price. I think you're actually getting somehow a decent jump above in the quality of shot. And then on top of that, you're also uh, getting a lot more money back in your pocket because it's a lot cheaper. So that's my final thoughts on it. Uh, again, 5.4 Gaggia Magenta Plus. I don't know what the plus is for. But <laughs> sorry. But uh, yeah, that's, that's my final score. Again, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.